Hey guys, I'm super excited that you guys are interested in quantum physics and quantum theory. I was going to just kind of dive right in, but I gave it some thought and it probably makes a lot more sense for me to start from ground zero. So I'm going to be doing a series of these so that we can really start to work into an understanding. It's taken me years of research and studying to even start to conceptualize the idea and years of practice to be able to prove to myself that this is a real thing. How I would define quantum theory is a mix between emotional intelligence, the law of attraction, and the science of mind. Power of your thoughts is absolutely, undeniably responsible for everything that goes on in your life. In the morning, the second that you hear yourself talking negatively to yourself, oh, I gotta get up for work. Oh, I have to do this today. There is an exercise where you can put like a hair tie or rubber band around your wrist. And as you say these negative things, snap it, um, if that's painful for you, because it kind of is actually, um, don't do that. Just start writing down all the negative things that you say to yourself. The point of this exercise is it is really hard to even understand for yourself and reason with yourself when you actually realize how negative you are towards yourself. Basic example, but you've probably had a morning where maybe you're running late, maybe you missed your alarm clock and you're running out the door, you spill coffee on your shirt, Oh, today is going to be one of those days. You get in the car, you get in a car wreck, and things just keep trickling down the line like that, kind of like a domino effect. So when these things start to happen, you can't sit there and just think, oh, really? I'm just going to change my thought process and miraculously, how could I all of a sudden be so positive about such a negative situation? Anything going on in your life can automatically be way worse. You're filled with anxiety because you're gonna be late to work. You have to think to yourself, nope, I'm gonna make it. You have to think, I have a whole closet of other clothes that I can go and throw on. And a lot of people don't even have the luxury of being able to say that and you start there. You have to control the negative thought process that we are built for some reason and wired to naturally think. And so then we can start to work against our natural thoughts into a more positive mindset that then attracts more positivity into our lives. I challenge you to try this because when you do and you start to see the result of this and the result is much better, I promise you, proven through science, by the way, start to change all of your thought process and you can do this in every aspect of your life, whether it's money, whether it's personal relationships, whether it's business. Here's the other part. I'm going to tell this as a story. Um, because I want you to relate back to yourself and your history and think back to a time where you were probably practicing this and you had no idea that you were. So when I was a little girl, I used to look out of this window in my bedroom and you could still see into some of DTC, the Denver Tech Center here. And I could see these buildings and I remember thinking to myself at a very young age that I wanted to be that woman. Sea level job and a nice building, wore high heels every day to work. Right out of college, I got into staffing and it is a very competitive sales position. It was kind of like Wolf of Wall Street walking in. The second day of my first job out of college, I was eating lunch outside and I remember looking up at the building and all of a sudden I realized the building that I worked at was the exact building that I had been looking at through my window as a little girl because it was the tallest building in the Denver Tech Center and that's the only reason that I could see it from my window. I had been visualizing what I wanted to do when I grew up and without even knowing, I wound up taking my first job in that exact building. Kind of creepy, right? Now, another topic is my athletic career and how I've been able to build a professional athletic career within sports that I never even played at a collegiate level. The law of attraction is exactly how I've done that. As a professional athlete now, I have been able to not necessarily master, but really get to a place of comfortability when it comes to visualization. When I was in high school, I played tennis and I was a head case. I would sit there and I would talk smack to myself about how terrible I was. I literally would start to fail miserably, even if I was better technically or skill set wise than my opponent. Not programmed or taught to do this. This isn't something that I, for one, was taught at a young age until someone introduced the secret to me. And literally since that day that I was willing to accept the changes of my thoughts, it takes a lot of time to actually see this play out in full to a point where it's actually believable. You have to give it time and practice to see the result of it working in front of you. And how I've done this is imagining not winning, but imagining the feeling of winning. And it's not coming from an arrogant thought process by any means. It is actually envisioning and imagining yourself in the moment 
that they call your name for first place or that you receive the award you've been working for. I can actually feel the exact moment of how it would feel to win, that I can bring myself to tears almost so much that when it happens or if it happens, it doesn't really even hit me the same because I've actually already celebrated that moment. When you practice this, it almost starts to feel like a very supernatural ability. When you feel the sensation of moments that you have not yet achieved, putting forth the energy for that to happen, and you start to see it unravel because you did that, you're gonna scare yourself. You absolutely are in control of every outcome in your life. Here's the caveat, or one of, I should say. You have to be able to trust your work ethic. If you are never able to disappoint yourself, if you are the person in the room that will always work harder, whether people know it or not, then you can count on that and leave the rest to your thoughts. You have to put in the hours, you have to put in the dedication, but the rest of it that has to match you is you practicing the attraction back to you through the power of thought. And when it comes to your EQ as opposed to your IQ, you can actually enhance your EQ and enhance the power to be able to think more intelligently and react with more maturity. Okay, so emotional intelligence is proven through science and the fact that whenever you have an intensified emotional reaction to something, whether that's anger, whether that's resentment, whether that's jealousy, hate, whatever, Whatever the case is, when your emotions are spiked, the brain actually releases a chemical and it's called the amygdala effect. And that chemical release allows for you to not think rationally and your reactions given the chemical that's released is not appropriate in the moment. You have to recognize that this is happening. Take a step back, silence yourself. Some people actually physically remove themselves from the moment due to the amount of clarity that's gained and then waiting to react when that chemical has diminished. You're actually scientifically thinking and then reacting with intelligence. The third one is science of mind. You can actually heal your body through the science of mind, through the science and the process of thought. So if you're going through something and you're struggling in your health, Guess what? This is also something that can help you. If you look at the amount of autoimmune diseases out there, things like celiac disease, lupus, and even thyroid disease, especially in women, or stress that's introduced to your body is actually an exact reaction to your immune system. It can lead to autoimmune diseases that then attack your own body. And it starts to take over either specific tissues or any other uh, parts of your body, it could be organs, hair, anything, you name it. So as an introduction to this extremely extensive topic, Let's start there. I really do encourage you guys to do your research into those three components that play into an overall conception of quantum theory and begin to look at yourself first. Write down the negative thoughts you have. Write down the self-doubt that you may plug into your own mind. If you play the what if game with yourself, what topics are you covering in self-discussion there? And then we'll move into the next realm of this that will then of course eventually lead to an all of our understanding of quantum theory.